Hello there. Welcome to the third episode in this Working with Arrays in JavaScript tutorial series. Um, the last time we saw how to access an array using its index position. Next, we will see how to loop over an array. So I'm going to copy the the topic. I'm going to remove that to make it a little bit cleaner so we are not logging uh, things on the console. Um, and actually, I'm going to close the console until we need it. Um, so how do we loop over an array in JavaScript? What is a loop? A loop in programming, because every programming that you know has a way to loop through it. Um, now, in JavaScript, there's a way to do that, several ways, in fact. Um, but so what is a loop? A loop, right, is a way to, is a way to tell your computer to go through a list of items. Okay, to go through a list of items continuously. All you need to do is to tell it where to start and where to stop. That is really convenient. You, you know, so check this in real life, okay? Let's say you are looking for a house with a red with a red uh, gate in a town of 100,000 people. Well, without any kind of identifier, any kind of address to the house, what you um, what uh, you might do is to go through each house and check is this house does this house have a red gate? Um, and maybe all they all, all they tell you is that there's only one house in that whole town that has a red gate. So you go through each town, each house uh, to check until you visit all the hundred ha like let's let's assume yeah, there are hundred uh, houses in the town. Um, the reason I I have that uh, analogy is with programming, you can tell it once to say, hey, go, go through all these hundred houses and visit them. So that is really convenient, I think, right? Instead of for you, for example, you, you literally have to check each of these houses hundred times, right? Whatever, uh, however many the houses are. We will program, you just set the instruction once and it goes through all the items in the, in the, in the array. Um, so my analogy is was probably poor, but I promise you uh, by the time you see uh, an example, that might clear things a little bit. So how do we loop over an array? Well, there are a couple ways to do that. Then I'm going to introduce a method called for each, okay? Is a method that works with arrays. And you can give it a bunch of array items. So like this, we have three items in our, in our array. We can give it this, uh, this array and it will go through each one of them and then stop. So let's do that. Let's do that. Um, so we already have my array three declared. Let's use it. So my array three dot for each. And for each, has 
a minimum of one argument, one parameter. So um, let me write it and then I'll explain. And before I console the login, let me, uh, yeah, let me console the login and then I can explain what I'm doing. So this is what I'm doing. Really, I do not expect you to know uh, the for each method, okay? Um, this might be a, a topic for another tutorial. But what I want you to, to, to really take from this is for each, what it does is just this one instruction. We would be uh, we would be able to go through all the arrays, the array items. Just one instruction, one instruction. You give the computer one instruction, and it will go through all the items in in the array. Even if you have a million item items in the array, it's gonna go through through them. Just one instruction, and that's what this for each does. So, so here. What I'm saying is, for each of the items in this array, go through them, go through it, and then print them out on the console. Um, so let's see what we have. Let me clear this and then make a little bit of change and see how that goes, so that it reprints it really nicely without the errors. Okay, it doesn't look like it's gonna work because that's not really okay. There we go. So we have rice, corn, and millet. Just this one instruction, we're able to get all the items printed. If you remember um, the last topic, when we access an array, we literally have to do it one by one, and, and I'm going to demonstrate this, okay? Let me um, uh, comment this out, meaning let me hide it from the JavaScript engine so it doesn't run it. All right, let's say I want to access the, the first item in the array, in this array, which is rice, okay? We knew that array three square bracket zero is how to access uh, the first item. Okay, so this is the first item. I'm gonna copy this because I will need it to access the second item. I just need to change the zero to one and the same thing zero to two. So what is happening here? I am accessing each of the items in the array, but I have to do it manually, literally. I have to do it manually, just like you would visit these houses individually. You visit this house to check if it has a red door, you go to the next. Uh, with loops, you don't need to, you just give it one instruction and it goes. Otherwise, you literally have to do it like this, manually. All right, let's check the first item. Let's check the second item. Let's check the third item. So looping is um, really one of the clever um, implementation in, in programming. Um, so I'm gonna comment this out, meaning I'm gonna hide it so the program doesn't run it. And I'm going to uncomment the array loop. So as you can see, it uh, goes through um, all the items in the array and prints them out. Um, let me add one more item. Let's see, beans. Okay, so it goes through rice, corn, millet, and beans. You can add as many as you want, and just this one instruction will go through 
and loop you array. Um, like I've mentioned earlier, there are several ways to, to go through a loop and array. Uh, but that's not really important. The most important thing is what the looping is and how convenient and really um, a nice feature it is to use and what the difference is um, with manually accessing each item. So, all right. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, let's see how we stack on our table of contents. We just finished this. The next will be add an item to the end of an array. So I will see you then. Thank you for stopping by. Bye-bye.